In this video, I'll show the potential benefits of the consumption of curcumin and its effects on cancer, whether in conjunction with accepted treatment methods such as chemotherapy, radiotherapy, or administered on its own. Data was collected from numerous sources, ranging from PubMed, Google Scholar, ResearchGate, Natural News, Scopus, ClinicalTrials.gov, various books and ebooks. It was assembled using a hierarchy of evidence to evaluate the most significant claims. It was seen that there's a strong correlation between the consumption of curcumin and low cancer incidence. It was also seen how curcumin's consumption is safe and beneficial when consumed along with accepted cancer treatment methods. This research is important as curcumin can be consumed on a daily basis as part of the diet, or the curcumin can be extracted, concentrated and administered either orally or topically with effect. However, curcumin's bioavailability was found to be low and methods of enhanced delivery or absorption need to be investigated to enhance its effectiveness. As there are numerous positive studies involving curcumin and the abundance of positive suggestive in vitro and animal studies, curcumin for cancer treatment warrants further investigation. Curcumin is a chemical which can be obtained from the roots of curcuma longa, known as turmeric. It's been used as a yellow-orange dye which becomes darker in an alkaline environment. This allows for its use in the preparation of laboratory boron detection paper. There's numerous pharmacological properties attributed to curcumin, which are thought to be mainly due to its inhibitory effect on metabolic enzymes. Curcumin has been shown to block the formation of reactive oxygen species, known as redox molecules. It possesses anti-inflammatory properties due to the inhibition of cyclooxygenases and other enzymes involved in inflammation. And it disrupts cell signal transduction by various mechanisms, including inhibition of protein kinase C. This could be the reason for its action in the inhibition of tumor cell proliferation and the suppression of chemically induced carcinogenesis, as well as tumor growth in animal cancer models. Curcumin's powerful effect on inflammation may be a reason why it's shown success when treating various forms of cancer. It's known that chronic inflammation causes DNA damage and that this DNA damage is linked to an increased risk in cancer. However, even though there are numerous laboratory studies showing the potential benefits, there's limited clinical trial data which is necessary to determine the effectiveness of a medication on patients. Therefore, this report aims to discuss the research which has been published up to date on the effectiveness of curcumin on cancer in humans. In investigating the effectiveness of a compound, it can be noted that due to its regular consumption in India, its use as one of their top herbal exports, and its use in Ayurveda, that through the use of dietary analysis, valuable information may be gained as a starting point. In studies involving long-term consumption from India and Asia of curcumin, it was noted in a cross-sectional survey determining the effects of diet on cancer rate in India, that the consumption of curcumin led to a reduction in cancer rates. This reduction may be due to the fact that it's been demonstrated that curcumin inhibits the growth of Heliobacter pylori, a group one carcinogen. However, again, this evidence only comes from in vitro studies. While investigating the clinical and preclinical data available for the effects that curcumin has shown in human clinical trials, there is no dose limiting toxicity when administered at doses of up to 10 grams per day. And curcumin exhibits the ability to suppress tumor initiation, promotion and metastases. From this, it can be seen that there's no need to worry about toxicity when consuming up to 10 grams of curcumin. 
It's also important to note the historical use of curcumin and that it's been consumed as a dietary supplement for centuries. And as a result, it is considered pharmacologically safe. Most commercial available curcumin supplements recommend consuming between one and two grams per day, which is well within the 10 gram proven safety range. In the research carried out by Wilkins et al. in 2011, in which a review of anti-cancer properties and therapeutic activities of curcumin in head, neck, squamous carcinoma was carried out, it was shown that curcumin influences a number of biological pathways which are responsible for mutagenesis, oncogene expression, cell cycle regulation, apoptosis, tumor genesis and metastases. It proposes its use as an adjuvant chemotherapeutic agent. It's also been shown that curcumin downregulates the inducible nitric oxide synthase activity in macrophages, thus reducing the amount of reactive oxygen species generated in response to oxidative stress. Inducible nitric oxide synthase is induced in response to an oxidative environment, and the nitric oxide generated can react with superoxide radicals to form perioxynitrate, which is highly toxic to cells. This shows how curcumin may be useful as a method to treat the inflammation which accompanies cancer. It's important to define what cancer is to be able to assess a treatment protocol. Cancer is a broad term for a related collection of diseases. The feature these diseases have in common is that some of the cells in the body begin to divide and do not stop. These can then spread into the surrounding tissues. This can occur anywhere in the body. In a healthy body, when cells age or become damaged, they die and get replaced. However, in a cancerous body, this series of events becomes disrupted and the damaged cells continue to grow, and these then become cancerous tumours. They can be either malignant tumours or non-malignant tumours. Malignant tumours spread into other tissues, whereas benign tumours do not. However, a benign tumour can be life-threatening, such as is the case with a benign brain tumour. When investigating the effect of curcumin in a combination with cancer medications, vincristine, cisplantin, fluorouracil and hydroxycampitocin, it was found that their effect was enhanced. This synergistic effect is promising, as there was no negative interactions observed, which further reinforces the safety of curcumin's use in combination with medications. When administered at concentrations of less than 25 micromoles, the growth of vincristine resistant cancer cells was inhibited, and then the concentration of curcumin exceeded concentrations greater than 25 micromoles. It was seen to be toxic to the cancer cells in a dose dependent manner. The expression of the multi drug resistant gene P glycoprotein was suppressed in vitro and in vivo. In a trial involving 30 participants, the effect of curcumin was evaluated against placebo in order to determine if there was a beneficial effect upon radiation induced dermatitis in breast cancer patients. The placebo group involved the patients consuming two grams of placebo, which consisted of four 500 milligram capsules per day by mouth in conjunction with radiation treatment for four to seven weeks. The curcumin group were consuming two grams of curcumin as four 500 milligram capsules orally per day, also in conjunction with radiation treatment for four to seven weeks. This study was randomized and double blind. One patient withdrew before completion of the trial. One patient was found to be ineligible and one patient was dropped from the study due to non-compliance. By the end of the study, 14 of the curcumin group had completed the study and 16 of the placebo group had completed also. These participants were between the ages of 18 and 65. 
as it was a breast cancer trial, all of the patients tested were women. The severity of radiation dermatitis was measured using the radiation dermatitis severity scale, the RDS scale, which ranges from zero to four, four being the worst affected. Upon completion of the trial, the results were calculated as a score of 2.6 on the RDS scale for the curcumin group versus 3.4 on the RDS scale in the placebo group. This indicates that there was a reduction of the symptoms of radiation dermatitis severity from the regular consumption of two grams of curcumin. There was no adverse effects seen in either the curcumin group or the placebo group. Although the results of this study are promising, the study only contained a total of 30 participants. Therefore, it's not statistically significant and it should be repeated with a larger number of patients in order to determine its effectiveness. It may also be repeated with a higher dose of curcumin as benefits were noted and no adverse effects were seen. As this radiation dermatitis is an unpleasant side effect of cancer therapy, and as the safety of curcumin consumption in conjunction with chemotherapeutic agents has been demonstrated, this may be a valuable addition to a cancer therapy. It should be noted that due to the differences which can occur in people's metabolism, that there may be different effects experienced by each individual who consumes an equal amount of curcumin. This can account for discrepancies in the results of trials involving curcumin administration. It's been shown how substances like magnesium are necessary for over 800 enzymes in the body, and that these enzymes may not function optimally when magnesium is depleted, which is common occurrence. Another phase two trial investigating the chemoprotective effect of curcumin on smokers and their prevention of colon cancer was carried out on patients with prevalent subclinical neoplastic lesions. For this trial, there were 44 patients enrolled. The age for eligibility was 40 years or older, and the patients were selected who smoked three packs of cigarettes per day. It was also a requirement for the patients who were consuming non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs to have a washout period of 14 days prior to the study. For this study, both male and female patients were selected. The type of study was non-randomized interventional study. The study consisted of two stages in which stage one involved the administration of two grams of curcumin to 23 patients and stage two involved the administration of four grams of curcumin to 21 patients. Both phases were carried out for 30 days and laboratory parameters were used to assess the effectiveness of the treatment. Two patients dropped out of each test group. In stage one, 13 patients were female, nine were male. In phase two, 12 were female, nine were male. No adverse effects were reported for the administration of the curcumin. Again, the study's results are limited due to the small number of patients measured. At the end of the study though, detectable levels of curcumin were found in the plasma of 19 of the patients in the four gram per day group, but none was found in the two gram per day group. This would indicate that a higher dose of curcumin would be needed in order to reach the colon and exert a cancer preventative effect upon the colon. There have been suggestions that in order to reach a higher concentration of curcumin in the colon, it may be necessary to consume the curcumin on its own away from chemicals which increase its bioavailability, such as bioperin, the black pepper extract, or a phospholipid complex. This is where the traditional culinary use of eating whole turmeric root may be more effective for the treatment or the prevention of colon cancer. And it shows how the root and method of administration may alter the effect or the location of the effect that a compound would have on the body. Any intervention in cancer treatment which enhances the effectiveness of the treatment while also being a safe natural product, which has a long history of safety due to its traditional uses of food, may enhance the well-being of the patient and improve their chance of survival. 
in a study carried out in order to determine if the consumption of a nutritional supplement in the form of a capsule containing a mixture of curcumin, green tea extract, polygonum cuspidium, and soybean extract was effective. It was evaluated for its effect in healthy participants. The investigation aimed to determine if the consumption of these supplements would cause changes in biomarkers related to an increased disease risk as measured by blood and urine tests. It consisted of a clinical trial involving 15 participants. It was thought that this small trial could show a statistical trend that would warrant further investigation consisting of a larger study. The trial lasted for two weeks where the patients would consume two 500 milligram capsules of the combined curcumin herbal mix twice per day. The participants were required to keep a diary to ensure their compliance with the protocol. The patients consisted of a mix of male and females over the age of 18. 11 participants started the study and all of them completed. Six were female, five were male. There was no adverse effects reported with the consumption of the curcumin herbal mix. The magnitude of change in blood lymphocyte NF-kappa-B level was measured using urine and blood tests and the mean change in blood lymphocyte NF-kappa-B level before and after the two week of consumption showed a change from minus 59 to minus 21 in optical density units. This indicates that there's potential benefit for the consumption of curcumin herbal mix in the prevention of cancer. Even though these studies show many potential benefits for the consumption of curcumin at various doses, they were all carried out on small numbers. Therefore, it's necessary to investigate curcumin's effect on a large population. These studies also were performed in short time frame and to truly determine the safety of a substance, long term studies are needed to be performed. At present, there's 15 ongoing studies on curcumin listed on clinicaltrials.gov. For example, one on the consumption of curcumin by obese women who have a higher risk of breast cancer and multiple studies assessing the combination of drugs with curcumin for potential synergistic effect. In an experiment altering curcumin to create six alkooxyphenyl curcumins, it was demonstrated that these have a high potential as anti-cancer agents. The synthetic curcumin analogues showed a dose-dependent anti-mitogenic activity against human colorectal breast and lung cancer cell lines with minimal effect on normal human fibroblast. With the increased understanding of chemistry, it's now possible for chemists to predict how to successfully alter molecules and predict their effect. For example, by adding a methyl group, the effectiveness may be increased, but also the potential to harm the liver becomes increased. This has been seen with new designer steroids and pro-hormones. It's of importance to note that animal and cell culture tests cannot be taken as evidence of safety when a compound is to be administered to humans. However, it's of interest to note that there has already been a long list of established benefits and effects with curcumin in vitro and in vivo. Some of the activities observed include anti-inflammatory properties, antioxidant and free radical scavenging properties, modulation of signal transduction pathways, anti-diabetic properties, anti-mutagenic, anti-carcinogenic properties, and neuroprotective properties. The World Health Organization's monograph states that curcuma longa rhizomes should contain no less than 3% curcuminoids and that this can be assessed using HPLC to quantify the quality of the starting material. It also gives a full description of the morphological characteristics of curcuma longa to ensure its correct identification. The monograph commissioned by Health Canada for curcumin states curcumin can be administered as capsules, chewables such as gummies and tablets, liquids, powders, strips or tablets. It notes the main use of curcumin are for the treatment of joint inflammation, 
and that there is also a source of antioxidants used to maintain optimal health. The dose they recommend is 400 milligrams three times per day for the relief of joint inflammation. In cases of gallstones or where there's been an obstruction in the biliary tract, it's recommended to first consult a physician before consuming curcumin. Hypersensitivity has also been observed. Allergic dermatitis has been reported. Interestingly, patients who were not previously exposed to curcuma longa showed fewer allergic reactions, indicating a possible sensitivity occurring with exposure to curcumin. As there is lack of evidence on the safety of the use, curcumin should not be consumed during pregnancy or breastfeeding. Other precautions listed in the Health Canada's monograph include consulting a practitioner if symptoms worsen or persist upon consumption of curcumin. If stomach ulcers or excess stomach acid exists, or if the patient is consuming blood thinning medication or platelet medication. Curcumin has numerous molecular targets and thus it can be very difficult to predict all of its possible effects from the consumption. It also makes it difficult to obtain conclusive results as to the benefits due to the potential of certain patients lacking a specific enzyme which could be required to activate its effect on a specific system in the body. It also shows how the benefits to a patient undergoing cancer treatment may not be from a single action, but as a result of a complex mix of actions working synergistically together. It can be seen that curcumin exhibits an effect on the telomerase enzyme, and many cancers have been linked to shortened telomeres, including pancreatic, bone, prostate, bladder, lung, kidney, head and neck. It's also being investigated as to whether determining the telomerase length could be used as a method for the detection of cancer and the effect of curcumin upon the telomere length could indicate a successful method to reduce the cancer risk to the patient. So as curcumin is a promising supplement for the use as a cancer preventative agent, chemoprotective agent and may have additional benefits preventing the growth of existing cancers, and it has anti-inflammatory effects, which have further benefits to patients undergoing cancer treatment. And as curcumin has shown safety when administered in doses of up to 10 grams per day, and the recommended dose for supplementation are between two and four grams per day, it doesn't appear to pose any risk of toxicity to patients. As there's limited evidence, though, on the administration of curcumin in the treatment of cancer on humans, it's necessary to do further testing on large numbers of patients across many demographics over long periods of time in order to determine the extent of the benefits and the limitations to curcumin supplementation. As it's been demonstrated that the consumption of curcumin in conjunction with numerous treatments is safe and poses no negative interactions and may even contribute to providing synergistic benefits to the treatment, such as uh, radiotherapy induced dermatitis that can occur in cancer patients being treated with radiotherapy. And as there's a long history of safe use, and as the herb has been consumed as a food, there's no reason to believe that there'll be any negative effects from the consumption of curcumin, apart from rare allergies which could occur with any other food. There's also a dietary correlation between the consumption of curcumin and the reduction of cancer rates, indicating that it possesses anti-cancer benefits. When this is taken into account, along with the promising in vitro and in vivo animal studies, it's no wonder why so many people are trying this herb to prevent cancer or to be used as a treatment in conjunction with their normal cancer treatment.